The Dogecoin chart is looking extremely bullish right now, leading to a lot of excitement that the big one could be just around the corner. Will it happen? I have a lot of stats and analytics to show you as we dive behind the scenes and look at this. The big one, if you don't know, is basically the name for when Dogecoin goes so unbelievably parabolic that it will change your entire life forever if you're holding a decent amount of Doge. Such a massive jump in a single day period that it will make every single jump before it look like peanuts. That's the exciting big one that people keep referring to and I'm excited about but hopefully seeing soon here with the Dogecoin price. Now the best thing you want to do right now, missing the big one, if that's what we want to call it, which I think we should call it that because that's a good name. If you miss the big one, you're going to miss out on one of the biggest runs, one of the most exciting times you could possibly ever imagine in the cryptocurrency world. So right now, take a second, especially if you're new, to go down there and subscribe with notifications on. For everyone who's been part of the channel, notifications extremely important because imagine I come on with a title like this. The big one is starting right now. If we see a massive jump in a matter of minutes, I'm gonna come on as quickly as possible. This right here is my full-time job, monitoring these charts, watching all the news. I do that 24 seven, every single day I'm doing that. I'm either sleeping, eating, or watching these charts and watching what's happening, staying updated. I have multiple different alert systems from notifications on different apps. And you combine that with people who send me messages and call me multiple different alarm systems to wake me up as fast as possible if we do see something crazy starting to happen. So I have so much in place right now to keep you as updated as possible. I'm devoting pretty much everything I have, attention-wise, intelligence, whatever the heck you want to call it wise, all of that focusing right now on this. So notifications on, extremely important because that way when the big one does start to happen, you'll see it immediately. Don't miss it, come join in on the fun. Notifications and I hit the button. Coming in from JD Berea, the like button, I believe you're referring to. Yes, let's make sure we're all hitting like as well because this, it feels like the excitement level is starting to rise a little bit again. As we've seen the Dogecoin price, that's Bitcoin right there. And Dogecoin price looking unbelievably bullish. Right now, it continues to try to jump up and then it falls back down a little bit. Jump up and then fall back down a little bit. The big one at any second can break out. Just like last time when we saw a massive spike, this one is likely going to be significantly bigger than that. A life-changing type spike. And if it happens soon, it's going to be incredibly fun to watch. Look at this. Big green candles. Big green candles keeps trying to break out. And another thing that's really important to keep in mind here is that right now, the price of Dogecoin is approximately 32 cents. For a while, it was mirroring Bitcoin in a way where Bitcoin would be at 32,000 if Dogecoin was at 32 cents. Bitcoin would be at 35,000 if Dogecoin was at 35 cents. Now though, Bitcoin has actually kind of leapt ahead of Dogecoin, left ahead of the pack a little bit when it comes to that mirroring. Bitcoin looking very, very, very good right now. That said, Dogecoin will likely catch up again in that mirror form, meaning that soon we'll likely see Dogecoin at 40 cents. I don't think it'll stay behind too long. One of the best times to be, to be looking at Dogecoin is when Bitcoin passes it percentage-wise, and then you know likely that Dogecoin spike is coming not too long from now. And if it triggers one of the big whale buys, then that's when we could potentially see the big one. So of course, that's what we're hoping for. Here's another chart that really gets us into the nitty gritty of this. When you think final stand show, think stats, analytics, charts, all the information behind the scenes to where we, right here on this channel, have the best grasp on what's happening in the entire cryptocurrency community of anywhere on the internet. You're not gonna find a better show than this for looking at the numbers behind the scenes. Not just with Dogecoin, with cryptocurrency altogether, but look at this. So this is what we've seen with inflows and outflows into Bitcoin long-term investments. These are, are not just Bitcoin, cryptocurrency long-term investments. These right here are people who are investing in multiple different cryptocurrencies, an entire group of them. So if you take your money out, you're not just taking out of one, you're taking out of all of them. If you put your money in, you're not just putting your money in one of them, you're putting money into all of them. And there are some that just have a few at the top. There are some that are more spread out, including Dogecoin and other smaller cryptocurrencies right now with Dogecoin in the top seven, but still smaller compared to Bitcoin and Ethereum right now. But this right here shows you. So this is per week. We have seen a ton of weeks in a row going up approximately 25 or so weeks in a row. We saw the amount of inflows being bigger than the amount of outflow. So more people putting money in and being confident in it. Then for the first time in approximately 25 weeks, we saw that starting to go down. So we saw people going out of these more than going into them. And that happened for two weeks in a row. The second one being the bigger one. And that was when we saw some of the biggest drops with all of cryptocurrency. Then that was followed by another little upwards one, not too big, but it was big enough to be noticed. Then another another pretty big drop. Then this week right here, another drop as well, but very, very tiny. And one thing that I think is extremely promising when you start to look at this is that despite the fact that Bitcoin has actually gone down by approximately 50% or so of where it was. So it was at around 65,000, dropped all the way to around 30,000. So 
a massive, massive drop compared to where it was, compared to where it is now. It's starting to get some of that back. But here you can see, even though the drop was that big percentage wise, people are still believing in it long term. What this chart shows right here is that most of the people causing the price to go down are not the long term investors who are excited about the long term, the long term prediction of Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrency. Those are the people who are going in the short term and likely will be going back in at some point because it is short term. Short term means you go in, you go out, you go in, you go out. That's what really caused the drop more so than the long term people. Because otherwise, if it was these people, if it was the people in it for the long run that were causing it to go down, then we would see that going all the way down at least to here or maybe potentially lower than that. So the fact that it was that size, I think is extremely indicative of the fact that we are towards the bottom of this specific dip or that we were a few days ago when Bitcoin reached that lower level. Now it's going back up some. Hopefully that is the indication we were looking for there. Also, nearly 90% of cryptocurrency investors surveyed say they weren't scared away by May's brutal sell-off and are planning to buy more. Thank you once again, JD. I, I do appreciate that as we see another chat coming in. We had Elon pumping it last time. Will he be the catalyst for the next pump? I think he'll absolutely play a big role in being the catalyst, but no, the big the big one that's coming is not just going to be Elon. It's going to be the community altogether. It's going to be big investors coming in and having this opportunity to buy Dogecoin before it takes off and really see some of the biggest gains it's going to see. A lot of that optimism is going to be from Elon Musk, but the vast majority of it is going to be just from investors seeing the potential it has, as we have seen the Dogecoin devs working on making Dogecoin significantly better. It is going to be competitive in every single way with every single other crypto that is in different positions right now as we see more and more energy coming into that so do not under any circumstances underestimate it is i think the best thing we should be telling people because it's true it really is true but that's a very good question there this right here is such a fantastic piece of information and this right here i mean come on is there any show out there that gets this detailed into the information maybe there is if there is congratulations and shout out to them but i don't know i don't know i feel like we have probably one of the best shows out here for actually learning new stuff and also having some excitement here and some fun. But with 90% of cryptocurrency investors saying they were not scared away by May's brutal sell-off, that goes to show you a number of things. And the first one is that people are definitely pretty optimistic in it, but you have to consider as well. So if you're surveyed, you want the public perception to be that it's going to be positive. So you may lie and say, yes, you weren't scared off by it, even if you actually were just because you know this poll is going to be public. But then on the flip side of that, you could also think if you did sell off or if you're planning to sell off a decent amount and you knew this poll was going to go public, you may want to say, yes, I was scared off by it. So then maybe it'll cost the price to go down more and you could buy more at a lower level. So with those two factors combined, I just think the fact that it's 90% that answered that they were not scared by it is such a remarkably high amount. I would have predicted it would be somewhere around 60 to 70%. This shows, once again, continuing to see more and more indications that we are definitely go likely going to see another bull run pretty soon here. It shouldn't be too long from now. As Mark Cuban also says, more great information here. Enjoy the information. Go down there and press like for the info. Let's see if we can get all the way up to 1,000 likes. Right now, we're at 400 and something so that's a pretty dang big hefty goal if all of us go down there and do it, if we continue pressing like on videos then we will actually have a big impact from doing that every single time the likes the likes cause it to go up really really fast immediately as eric the seeker coming in to the moon keep up the great work matt the dogecoin community loves you we are in this as a family i love that sentiment coming in from eric the seeker thank you for our big chat coming in as you have some charts there saying dogecoin going to the moon soon with a very very bullish looking chart there as we're, we're just like that we had 100 100 of us press the like button and instantly the viewers jumped up from 1600 to 1765 and remember we're, we're streaming right now at 11 25 which is not the ideal time for the most viewers in terms of live we will have a ton of people come watch after so to everyone watching after shout out to you guys as well i know you don't normally watch live but that's completely fine you're watching after which is just as good maybe not just as good but it's close it's close mark cuban says banks should be scared of cryptocurrency based DeFi, and he's 100 right about that Part of it is because now we don't have to worry about those massive fees that are coming in from the banks, them controlling it versus us controlling it. I think the second one is definitely more ideal, which means though, instead of them making the money from this, because banks are extremely profitable, you can make a heck of a lot of money if you own a big group of banks or a big chain or even just a single bank, you can make a heck of a lot of money. So with that considered, the fact that we're going to be able to loan out money to ourselves using cryptocurrency, smart contracts, one of us loaning out to the other person or a pool 
We, we can go around this now. We no longer have to also drive to the banks to do things like that. It'll automatically be set up in place through these smart contracts in a system that also goes against inflation and has a steady amount of currency that comes in for most of these currencies here, especially at the top. Dogecoin being five billion a year, Bitcoin being that it goes down even more and more and more in the amount that's being mined as time goes on. So those are two things to consider right there that are extremely important. Another thing that a lot of people aren't thinking about, Bitcoin as those amount that can be mined, it goes down. As the amount goes down, we're going to see the security levels of Bitcoin going down a little bit as well. So even though I believe in Bitcoin in its long-term future, and there will likely be updates that come onto the Bitcoin block and come onto the Bitcoin chain that will help that moving forward, there is still a little bit more risk right now investing in Bitcoin than there is investing in Dogecoin, which has so many more advantages to it. And same with Cardano, XRP. Those are two really great ones that I like a lot right now. There's a lot of them that I think have major potential. Binance, even Binance coin, even could slide in there and become one of the ones that gains a lot. Ethereum, I would say less so actually. I'm starting to be more and more bullish about the ones that are in the places three through seven, rather and not including Tether, rather than Bitcoin and Ethereum right now, even though I'm still continuing to hold both those, because stability within your portfolio is definitely something you're gonna wanna have. If you don't have stability, then what the heck are you doing? What the heck are you doing? You know what? Let's go ahead and roast unstability right now. I, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the roast music. We'll roast unstability and just see how it feels. You know, unstability, sometimes it makes us not feel good. So you know what? We're gonna take it right directly back to unstability and roast it right now. So here's the roast music. <sighs> Unstability. Can you even decide what you're doing going up and down and all around in an entire circle? You look like a fool, Unstability. What the heck are you trying to do? Do you want to go up or do you want to go down? Just pick one or the other and stop messing with our brains, Unstability. There we go. I, I feel like Unstability got the message. I feel like it understands now. It understands what it's doing. Actually, though, to be to be honest, Unstability is kind of exciting. It, whether it's going up or down, it's still interesting to watch. To the moon! Hashtag we love you, Elon. Hashtag we love you, Matt. I love that coming in from Marcus. Thank you so much. Hashtag we love you, Elon. And if you, want, if you want to throw hashtag we love you in there, Matt, too, that's very nice. How many Dogecoin mining facilities have you heard of being built? Yeah, there are more and more and more that are continuing to be built. We saw not too long ago a $5 million deal to buy a mining facility that was focusing mainly on Dogecoin, other cryptocurrencies as well. So more and more Dogecoin mining is continuing to be built. The great thing about Doge is that it continues to have the same amount that's mined every single year. So you have some stability in that. You don't have to worry as much about the long-term future and what it means, even though we will see more mining happening. So I guess that would be the, the question mark there. But the more mining is, I don't think, as big of a question mark as it is for a lot of other cryptos. As we have seen, Goldman and Sachs, Goldman Sachs, Cryptocurrency Trading Desk, they're expanding it with Ether, Futures, and Options. So there we go, Ethereum now getting a boost from Goldman Sachs. Salute, Matt, Doge is about to go crazy to the moon and beyond, coming in from Claudio. I think you're 100% right about that. There's no question that right now Dogecoin is looking probably more bullish than it has in a number of months. And that, that includes before some of the craziest things we've seen with Dogecoin in the past going up or down. It, it's looking really, really bullish right now. I guess the exception would obviously be the times we saw just going pretty dang parabolic. We could see it going even more parabolic though in the future. That's obviously what we're hoping for. As we see, Susie Orman likes Bitcoin. Here's how she says you should invest in it. And there was another guy who came on who was older, an older gentleman as well, meaning over 60 years old, which right now is a small percentage. We do have a lot of us in the community who are over the age of 60, but it's not as much as it's going to be in the future. This right here, people coming on the news, which is what primarily people over the age of 60 are watching right now, is going to be extremely, extremely bullish. Someone came on yesterday who's very trusted among people who are older and said, that he believes Bitcoin is extremely good, extremely stable. It's something that everyone should be looking at as an investment for the long term, which is going to appeal directly to people who are currently retired and cause a lot of new people to be investing in Bitcoin. As more people like this start to come on, it does seem to some degree organized. I wonder if there's someone behind this trying to convince older people who are retired to invest in Bitcoin, regardless of that, if that's true or not, I feel like it's gonna work because more and more people are going to start looking at that as an investment. All star Rich Bernstein warns though that Bitcoin's a bubble, sees oil as the most, as the most ignored bull market. So on the flip side of that, we still are having a lot of people coming in and being bearish, but all of them, it seems like, have outside incentives. This guy investing heavily in oil, he would like you to take your money out of cryptocurrency and put it in oil instead. That seems to be his primary motivation for saying this. It's not that it's not possible. It's not that we can't have a big bad news story come out and take down the entire cryptocurrency market. It's not that if someone does figure out how to do what seems like it should be impossible and find out how to crack code of Bitcoin, it could fall from that. So you do have to obviously be careful, but at the same time, 
it's silly some of these people who are coming out and saying it because we can see right through their ulterior motives. If you want to look at an example of that, ExxonMobil gone down a decent amount in the last five years or so gone down. It seems to be going back up a little bit, but not really that much. So I do not see any reason why ExxonMobil, for example, oil stocks should be what you should be investing in. It's not really that bullish. I mean, there are some slots for it to go into, but you also have to consider the fact that Tesla and other electric car companies are going to be moving at really, really fast speeds. I don't see any reason why this dude is right about that. So there we go. Now that we debunked him. Should we roast him? Maybe we should. I don't know. Elon Musk finally selling his mansion in San Francisco as well. I think that's kind of cool. I mean, he's, he's, he's saying, you know what? Bye bye to the mansion. I'm just going to be living in my $50,000 house. Maybe Elon should maybe upgrade a little bit. Just just buy a slightly nicer house. There's nothing wrong with that, Elon. There's no shame in living in a mansion, but I still do think it's cool that he's 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 uh basically saying, you know what? I want to have my houses be used for, for more stuff. So I kind of do like that side of it. Anyway. That's all the big news for the stuff and the things and all the th uh, all the stuff after that. Make sure you're subscribing with the notifications on. Whatever the heck you do, take a second to do that. It really is worth it. And I will see you in the next video.